gatherings after the singing with emails and letters from around the world and around America. We get calls and emails from people. And these are people, some people like the ministry, some hate the ministry. And, uh, and we get letters from people. I got a, and we are on TV all over America, and we're also, uh, when you say America, I mean the United States. I don't mean South America. Well, we are on the Internet in South America on the internet all over the world 24 hours a day. Got an email from Harold Wood's sister, Karen Woods, and I don't even know her. How's your day going? I hope things are going well. Please, I need you to help me with something. Can I get a loan from you urgently? I will reimburse you under a week, I promise. Well, you don't need to promise if you really would. I need to solve some personal problems at hand, which have given me worries. I have also prefer if we discuss this through email, as I'm presently in England for a friend's funeral. I'm sorry if I didn't inform you about it, but please try and understand. I had to leave in a hurry on hearing that the date of her burial was rescheduled, and it seems I can't access my credit card and bank here in London. This is something in. I'll let you know how much I need if you're willing to assist me. Blessing Sister Woods. I don't even know her. Somebody heard that we help the needy. We help the needy who believe the truth. People who believe predestination, Christmas is pagan, Easter is pagan, daily cross, death to self, self-denial, being hated by the world. And it has to be people that are associated with the ministry that I have known and that I know your situation. I'm sure there are people out there who will say, hey, sis, or hey, brother, uh, this ministry gives away money if you're if you associate with them. Let's start calling them today and tell them to send us DVDs, and we'll ask them for money in two or three weeks. It ain't going to do you any good. I'm not hard-hearted. I'm soft-hearted, and I give to people in this ministry. I give away uh, 1000 1500 2000 sometimes $2,000 a month. But not just to somebody that you heard this ministry gives money to. I want you to be understand this. We help. We don't just... I've had people associated with the ministry say, can you help me give me $10,000 to start a business in my home? No. Can you consolidate my bills? They're two or $3,000. No. The most I normally give to somebody is about $200, sometimes three. If it's somebody that's real close to us and we know them real well, we give food cards. We get we got food pantry. got some food up here that needs to be taken to the pantry. We help the needy, absolute believers that I know we're absolutely believing. I don't go out here and just look for people to help. I can find a whole bunch of bums down on Broadway downtown Nashville to help get drunker if I want to help somebody do something. And... Uh, I told Mary, said, you need to quit saying that you help people. I help the people here and that watch us on TV and that are extended members of our family. But I don't give away as much as they want. I've had several people come to me. I want to start a business in my home. I want you to consolidate my bills. I need $5,000. I'm sorry, we're not Grace and Truth Bank and Trust. That's not what we are. This, and this is for the really, really, really needy. If you can fly to England for a funeral, I probably won't help you. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, I've had people want me to pay traffic tickets. I've had them want me to pay off their furniture. I've had people want me to... You're talking to... A... I'm not an easy touch. I'm easy for the people that are really, truly godly, righteous, and holy. And I've known them a while, and I know how they are. And even some of them have been, some of the people that have left here have been contrary to me. If they came to me and I knew their heart for the Lord, I'd probably help them. But I won't just help somebody I don't know. I had a girl call me one time from Brandeville and said, this lady told me you give away money. Uh, I need money to, I said, whoa, who are you? 
well, my name is Susie Jones or something like that. I don't know, something. And such and such, I met out in Arkansas, said, you give people money. Don't you go believe in that. I, I help people that are believers in predestination, the sovereignty of God, and you've got to convince me of that first. And, uh, or you've got to come here for a good while and say, I love the message. And so I'm, I'm harder to get to than you think. Uh, Jean Lavier writes to us from Houston. She's been watching us for a good while and loves the truth. I think she's about 73. Hi, Jim, Mary, Tom, and all the elect. Just want to say hello and let you know I am still listening to the DVDs and appreciate them so much. Once you hear the truth and accept it, all else becomes transparent. A feeling of anger wells up when the false teachers are the ignorant, speak out ignorant, uh, or deceit, so I understand Jim gets angry. Say hello to all, and I wish I could be at the Chili in the Park. I love the name Chili in the Park. Every time I think of it, I get so hungry for Chili <laughs> and wind up going to the store. <laughs> and that's from Gene Lavier in Houston. And then Nathan Huckabee writes to us, Mr. Brown, do you have a CD that concentrates on definition, your definitions illuminate so clearly. I got about 2,800 of them. <laughs> I do have one that I've got. It's called Drinking the Cup Metaphors. It's metaphors in the title. Metaphors, Drinking the Cup, Metaphors and Idioms or something like that. It's got a lot of definitions on it. I just remember it I, when I... I found one one day, and I said, oh, gosh, I've got to have more of these made because I remember it, it was. And I did a message on Second Timothy, the third chapter, I believe, and it was really good. Um, I've got certain ones I can remember that have got lots of definition in them, a whole bunch of all kinds of definitions. Uh, we do have. Uh, maybe I can help them pick one out. Uh, Lancy D'Souza in India. Uh, praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you all so much for the three DVDs. May the Lord richly bless you all. Love, Lancy in India. We love you, Lancy. Keep watching. And then uh, Winston Dillon from Brooklyn. Dear Pastor Jim, this is Brother Winston Dillon from Brooklyn. I have some friends that live in the state of New Jersey who wants to know if you broadcast on public access tv in new jersey if you do can you tell me what day time and channel where they can view thank you agape and flail well winston you need to tell them to contact us and we'll see if they'd like to represent us on tv up there we can get on uh maybe a public access or lease access tell us what town they're in uh, then uh Doug Pilot writes to us, and he's up in uh, Hoosick Falls, New York, and uh, sent a paper on Dead Sea Scrolls. I'm not going to be able to read that. It's just appreciate you sending that, Doug. And uh, Ken Grice writes to us, and he writes, Wolf Wagner was one of many British soldiers who visited our home in Cairo, during the war, I was young and suddenly realized how important my father was. To these desert-hardened soldiers, the attached was written by Wilf, a massive construction owner, boxer, wrestler, poet. But this goes on for pages and pages. I can't read that. It's just a poem of some guy. I read a little bit of it, and I thought, well, that's too much. It's about five pages of poetry. So you'll have to... Uh, figure that out yourself. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <coughs> Nathan Eubanks, whoever he is, <laughs> writes to us. Yeah, yeah, he's got a game show. <laughs> That's Bob Eubanks with a big smiley face. <laughs> I'm Bob Eubanks and I am old now and I've got my cheeks are sagging. <laughs> and they are. Uh, he wrote this, the trader who went on BBC News and admitted that the banks ruled the world 
not governments, appears to have the media reeling. Not sure whether or not to believe this brazen bit of telling truth. Uh, this is something somebody wrote to us. A trader by the name of Alesso Rastani told a shocked BBC News reporter yesterday, the governments don't rule the world. Goldman Sachs rules the world, he warned. The savings of millions of people are going to vanish, and said viewers should get prepared because the economic crisis is like a cancer. If you just wait and wait, thinking this will go away, just like cancer, it's going to grow, and it's going to be too late. He added, I have a confession. I go to bed every night, and I dream of another recession. Okay. Another one. I didn't think we came out of this one. I dream of another moment like this. Such frank, psychopathic language earned Rastani attention from news outlets like Huffington Post, The Guardian, and The Daily Mail. Well, I believe in the golden rule. The one who has the gold makes the rules. That's what I believe. And I guess that's the banks, isn't it? Uh, I, th I believe that's, that's really not hard to figure out. If you own this big company that gives all these people these jobs in this area of the state, do you rule that area of the state? Well, I guess so. If you fire them all, they ain't got jobs no more. You know, and uh, if, like Rupert Murdoch, they said on TV, I mean on a website that he had 53,000 employees. Does he rule where those people are employed? Yeah, I guess so. Um, and if they have the money and they make things happen, the presidents are always confiding in these super money people and gather them together and get their opinions. If you really want a, the right kind of president, you need to get Lee Iacocca. Because Lee Iacocca is this genius in the car industry. He pulled Chrysler out of, out of bankruptcy and made it one of the most successful companies when, while General Motors has started floundering. And nobody in the 50s or 60s thought General Motors would ever flounder. And the, but the only problem is the president makes, what, 400000 a year? And Lee Iacocca was making $27 million a year. It's going to get him be hard to get a man that knows how to run big corporation. The United States is a big corporation. It's going to get a, man, a lot of difficulty in getting a man to quit $27 million a year and go to 400000 isn't it? And when, uh, when uh, uh, Ronald Reagan, whatever his name is, Ronald Reagan had the Grace Commission. It was named after one of the big moguls, and he got 2,000 men big super uh, industrialists from all over America and brought them to Washington, D.C. to see if they could come up with a way of balancing the budget, and they could. And the Democrats said, we're not going to vote on that because that's a bunch of Republicans. Of course, the Democrats could do the same thing. They could get Democratic industrialists and get them to come there. But what runs our government is a bunch of ambitious lawyers. That's the last thing you need running a country, isn't it? Lord have mercy. I mean, you wonder what's wrong with America? Lawyers. Isn't that right? What was that thing I read to y'all? Yeah, but I've got something here on the lawyers. If I got it. Very interesting. I don't know if I got it. If I can find it. I probably can't. Some gun gun control. Y'all remember that? Uh, remember the thing I did on gun control? Yeah, here it is. Yeah. Th th said this this is apropos, whatever that means for right now. <laughs> it's appropriate for right now. Okay, the number of physicians in the US is seven hundred thousand. Accidental deaths caused by physicians per year are hundred and twenty thousand. Physicians call 100, cause 120,000 deaths per year. Accidental deaths per, per physician are 0 0.171. Statistics courtesy of U.S. Department of Health Human Services. Now guns. The number of gun owners in the U.S. is 80 million. Yes, that is 80 million. The number of accidental gun deaths per year, all age groups is 1,500. 
the number of accidental deaths per gun owner is 0 0.00188 statistics courtesy of the FBI. Statistically, doctors are approximately 9,000 times more dangerous than gun owners. <laughs> Remember, guns don't kill, kill people, doctors do. <laughs> Fact, not everyone has a gun, but almost everyone has at least one doctor. Yeah. Please alert your friends to this alarming threat immediately. We must ban doctors before this gets completely out of hand. <laughs> out of concern for the public at large, I have withheld the statistics on lawyers for fear the shock would cause people to panic and seek medical attention. <laughs> That's funny, isn't it? Oh, I mean, I love that. <laughs> I gave that to my allergist. The girl just hollered all over the place. I thought that was hilarious. It is funny. Guns do not kill people, doctors do. All right, I'm about down here. We got a few calls. This must have been in today. Rick Jenkins from Oklahoma. Hector Duarte. Uh, he's in... Tucson, Vicki Smalls, somewhere. No, that's a, that was a recommendation. Uh, Sharon Marshall writes to us from Grand Prairie, Texas. Grand Prairie. Grand Prairie, I know where that is. That's between Dallas and Fort Worth. I was raised in Fort Worth. Here's Fort Worth, Arlington, Grand Prairie, Dallas. That's the way it works. You see? And there's 30 miles between Fort Worth and Dallas. So you got two cities. It's, you don't, it's like one big city. Hello, Grace and Truth Ministries. Thank you so much for the DVDs. Your Ministries of Truth is all I have now. Speaking truth, I've found most people don't want to hear it, especially those who consider themselves religious. This area that I am in, in full, is full of apostate preachers and religious people. Your DVDs on the on the truth have really opened my eyes and ears. Churches that I attended in the past has completely rejected what, you're, what you taught me on truth and the real Jesus. Keep up the good work. Signed, Sharon. And this is from Sharon Marshall, Grand Prairie. Sharon, we love you. Keep, keep watching. It's so funny, you can get real blunt with the truth and people hate it. And then from Delaware, Ohio, a little note from, from uh, who is this? Uh, from who? Snyder. Oh, from Larry Snyder. From Larry Snyder. Thanks for our daily food. We haven't wrote in a long time. Just wanted to say thanks, and we love the truth. Barbara and Larry Snyder, please change address labels, and they give us a new address. And uh, then, got one other, Murtis Barron, San Jose, California. I think she's one of our representatives out there. And then she writes, in San Jose, do you know the way to San Jose? Yes. <laughs> I, just, I, I don't know if being a singer comes to mind. Dear Jim and Mary, to Jim, my name is Murtis Barron. From San Jose, California, I was more than happy to help put Grace and Truth back on Channel 15 here in California. I started watching you April of 2011. It was easy for me to believe predestination. I saw things in church that you would probably believe. However, I still was searching for something different. My good friend, Africa Kenyatta, told me about you, and I knew your words was of God. I heard the truth for the first time. Thank you for all of your research and all your hard work. Agape and Flail Murtis. We love you, Murtis. You keep watching this. And that'll be enough reading. That'll be all I've got to read. All right. Uh, remember our, our TV in Nashville, Monday night and Saturday night at 10 o'clock. Channel 176 and, and uh, Wednesday morning, Friday morning at midnight, Channel 176. And then Thursday night on Channel 49 at 11 o'clock. And then we're on Channel 3 in Hendersonville at, at, uh, Hendersonville at, at 5 and Thursday night at 7. That's on Channel 3. And uh, we, uh, 
we try to reach out to the poor and the needy, not just anybody that comes along. <coughs> if we tried to help everybody that came along, we'd be helping 100,000 people, and we don't have that much money. We don't have $100,000 to give them a dollar apiece. We help as the offerings come in. You want to freely give, we help the needy. And uh, we believe in that. There's people that have an extremely difficult time paying their bills. We've got some right here that come here regular on a regular basis. And uh, we're not feeling sorry for anybody. I have been one of those people that couldn't pay my bills. And I said, if I ever got to a place where I could, I'm going to help the downtrodden. I'm a champion of the poor. That's why I get angry at, at, at Kenneth Copeland. And people don't like for me to call them idiots. Idi idiotes is the Greek word, unlearned. And I like to say it with a harshness, idiot. I mean, when they're <laughs> cheating and steal little grandmothers out of their last nickel, I'm going to call them what they are. Now, what if I called them children of hell like Jesus called the Pharisees? You, you come to sin land to make one proselyte, and you make, after you make, him, you make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. And you uh, could call them vipers, snakes, poison snakes. Paul said that the poison of asps is under their lips. He says these false teachers are lying snakes. That's what Paul says. So just because it's King James English in the King James Bible don't mean the words are not as harsh as it is. And uh, I don't like those people at all that cheat the poor. I'm out to protect the poor and the needy and the downtrodden. I don't know if people that get mad and leave understand that. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to protect you from people that are trying to hurt you. I'm here to help the sheep and the flock. I'm ready to die for them. And uh, no matter whether people believe that, my wife knows me. My son knows me. Mike knows me. People that surround me all the time know that's my whole purpose in life. I want to teach people the truth, as much of it as I can record it before I die. Uh, remember, remember our, our missionaries down in Ecuador. We've got two missionaries that I am astounded at their commitment and their father's astounded at their commitment they've gone down to ecuador to preach to a bunch of natives that get drunk all day every day and uh the only way they can teach is take their kids and bring them to church and teach them and they're going to they started a school they got to teach the kids to read first before they can read the bible and they're going to teach them to read spanish so they're learning and uh just be in prayer about them. And if you want to give to this ministry, we give all the money that you send. We give more than the money you send. Sometimes we'll get $50 in. I'll send 100 to them. And uh, I just, sometimes if we get 250 I'll send 300 And we've sent quite a bit of money to them. They're preaching predestination to these natives. They're preaching a daily cross and self-denial and death to self to them. And they're fighting heat like you wouldn't believe. They're fighting uh, mosquitoes, tremendous humidity. Scott said it rains hard every day. And then when it stops less than five minutes, you're burning, sweating. Just, it's just a, it's a crazy weather they have there. And snakes and all kinds of jungle creatures and... Uh, plus a bunch of natives that's threatening their lives, plus the Catholic Church, plus the local government, and plus the Ecuadorian government. They're just battling them all the time. Just uh, give to them liberally. If you write a check, put Ecuador Mission Fund on the bottom, or just put Missionary Fund. That'll be fine. And uh, we'll get that money to them immediately. It doesn't, I don't hold those checks any time. Immediately the next day, unless I'm really pressed for that day, I, I go by and get a cashier's check and send it to them immediately. I don't know how much we've sent them, eleven, twelve thousand dollars $12,000 since he was here back a few months ago. And that $12,000 over there, or thirteen, whatever it is, that's, I don't know what it's equivalent to here, thirty or 40000 maybe fifty. I don't know. But it's a whole lot more there than it is here. So uh, just be aware they need our help. And uh, 
We, we don't have any visitors, do we? No visitors. Nobody hadn't been here before. All right. Is there anything I'm missing, Mary, that you can think of? Huh? Our chili cookout, our chili, chili in the park. Uh, October 29th, you want to come from out of town, come and join us. You can get a motel room here. Uh, we like to have it on October the 29th because that's uh, it's cold. <laughs> <coughs> and uh, chili tastes good. And Jared will be cooking up a big pot of that, that chicken chili. I love that. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. And uh, good to see everybody here. Gerald, why don't you pray for us right now? Heavenly Father, thank you so much for doing the word, Lord. Thank you for giving us this opportunity to come study with you, Lord. Thank you for your word, Lord. Keep us in your way, Lord. Amen. <clears throat> If I look, kind of sleepy I am. If you think I'm mad, I'm not. I'm just, this ragweed is just, uh, uh. I'll preach myself out of it in a minute, though. Ragweed is like spraying poison in the air for me and saying, now take a breath of it, Jim. People say, well, you can do this to get away from it. You can't get away from it. Every cubic feet of air has millions or hundreds of thousands of particles of pollen in it. So you don't get away from it, not in the house or out of the house. Some say that in the house is worse than being outside because it's concentrated in there and you're not getting rid of it. If the wind comes outside, then I can go outside and sleep. If it's 10 degrees, I can do that and I'll be okay. <clears throat> but I'm not, I don't get in bed like I used to. I'm, thank, I'm thankful for that. Amen. I hope y'all understand, I don't come into church and preach when I feel like it. Did you get that? Yes. Okay. I just wondered if you got that. <laughs> I didn't say, did you hear it? Did you get it? <clears throat> but I love the Word of God enough to preach it when I'm not feeling real well. For some reason, it just winds me up. I get real into it. <clears throat>